and in particular, the second fundamental theorem of integral calculus. By the integral calculus approach, what we do is, is we pick any positive number A, and once picked, we fix it. You see, we have a great deal of freedom in how we choose the, number, the positive number A, but let's pick one and leave it here. Now what we'll do is in the yt plane, we'll draw the curve y equals 1 over t. You see, and what will we do now? We'll study the area of the region R, where R is bounded above by y equals 1 over t, on the left by t equals a, on the right by t equals x, and below by the t-axis. Now, we've already seen that the function that we get by taking the definite integral from a to x, dt over t, has the property that its derivative is 1 over x. In other words, recall from the fundamental theorem, this is general, just a generalization of the fact that if f of t is a continuous function, then the integral from a to x, f of t dt, is a function of x. And its derivative with respect to x is just f of x. You see, in other words, I can now view capital L of x as being an area under the curve y equals 1 over t. Notice that I have a degree of freedom here, namely what that area is depends on where I choose A. Notice that if I choose A differently, changing A, let's call this A prime, say, changing A changes the area under the curve, but notice that it changes it by a fixed amount. In other words, notice that shifting A just changes L of x by a constant, just like the ordinary indefinite integral. At any rate, these are the two approaches that we have. And if we superimpose them, all we're saying is what? If you start with the differential calculus approach, y equals capital L of x must be a member of this family crossing the axis at some point a comma 0. And from the integral calculus point of view, if you take the curve y equals 1 over t and compute the area under that curve from a to x, that area function is L of x. Okay? Now, we'll let that rest for the time being, and now...